she's joining us today. So before I get into introductions and such, I'd like to give her an opportunity to greet everyone and say hello as well. Jean, glad you could join us. Oh, hello everyone. And it's great to see uh, folks logging on. Um, let me just share with you my, um, ex my extensive gratitude to Suzanne Armringer uh, for her leadership this last couple of years. Well, I guess it's been a year. It seemed like it's been longer ago um, between Dr. McGuire, uh, Dr. McGuire's retirement and Dr. Salisbury joining us. So Suzanne, um, just um, kudos to you. And of course, my um, great enthusiasm for uh, Dr. Salisbury's uh, joining our, our team. Um, I, th I think when you get a chance to hear from her, you're going to understand why I'm um, so enthusiastic and um, I think we have great things to come in the future. So uh, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Jean. And I'm going to go ahead and just get started with a few housekeeping items today, and then I will hand things over to uh, Amy and also Suzanne who are going to present today. So we're really excited to be able to formally present our new Associate Dean of Research Scholarship and Innovation, Dr. Amy Salisbury, to you all today. Um, both she and Suzanne are going to share um, some information, some updates um, about what has been going on within the office. And at the conclusion of that, then I will uh, uh, allow folks to unmute themselves and to ask questions. So during the presentation today, if you can keep yourselves muted, that would be greatly appreciate, appreciated. Um, however, I would like to encourage folks to use our chat box feature and whether that's because you'd like to say hello to the group or share who you are, whether you're an alum or what your association or interest in the School of Nursing might be, um, that would be fantastic and feel free to do so. And before I transition and hand things over, I'll do a quick introduction of Amy and Suzanne. Uh, so Dr. Armringer most recently served as the Interim Assistant Dean of Research, Scholarship, and Innovation. Dr. Armringer was recently named as the Florence E. Elliott Professor. Dr. Armringer is going to share about her experiences leading the Office of Research, Scholarship, and Innovation for the past year and share updates about what the Office of Research has also accomplished. Dr. Amy Salisbury began working with the VCU School of Nursing as the new Associate Dean of Research, Scholarship, and Innovation just a couple of months ago in August. Dr. Salisbury comes to us from the Albert Medical School at Brown University. Dr. Salisbury brings over 20 years of experience in teaching, research, and clinical nursing, and we're really thrilled to have you here at VCU. So from here, I'm going to hand things over to Dr. Armringer, and I said earlier, uh, please feel free to use the chat box to say hello, introduce yourself, and we'll kick things off from here. Thanks, Pam. Uh, let me just ask Sydney, are we uh, putting up our own slides? I'm sorry, I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and share your screen. One second, very quickly then. You're able to see it, but it's not in slideshow, correct? Correct. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. I am excited to be here today uh, to talk with you about the research activities that have happened over the past year. As um, many of you know, we have been in a period of rebuilding. About five to seven years ago, we lost. Um, to retirement and, and, tran and transfers, a number of our senior faculty, who were uh, many who were providing mentorship and had the funding. And so um, we, we, uh, had, um, we had a lot to recoup during, the, uh, during these past five to seven years. 
we did have a strong foundation from our predecessors. Uh, we had a new building, we had a biobehavioral research lab, um, but we were just lacking some uh, senior leadership. And so we had a new dean, Dean Giddens, who started about seven, eight years ago. And uh, then a few years, about five or six years ago, uh, Dr. Debbie McGuire started as our associate dean for research. And she really put us on the road to rebuilding and restructuring and reforming. Um, I think we gave Dean Giddens a little dyspepsia over time, some of, the, some of those years, but she hung in there and was an, a strong supporter uh, during these rough, uh, really some rough years. Um, we had um, this past year, some of the fruits of, of the rebuilding that we've done will be evident in this presentation, as you will see. Um, when, I, when I signed on as interim, last July, I didn't read the fine print that said there will be a pandemic that will hit in the spring. Um, so I was a little bit unprepared for that. Uh, but it's been, a, it's been a great year and um, in, in many ways. So what I'd like to do with this, um, actually let me talk a, bit, a little bit about COVID-19 and some of the effects of what happened. Um, it, we, as you well know, the university had to shut down in March of this year, March 2020. And when it shut down, we had to virtually uh, suspend all research that was either face-to-face -face, um, research or a lot of the bench science research across the whole university. So it was with the, uh, Dr. Sri Ram Rao, the research deans, the health system, that the, uh, much of the research was shut down. As you can imagine, it has an effect on our faculty um, on, on particularly on our, our um, assistant and associate professors who are really building their science. It has an effect on their, their trajectory as, as they're moving towards tenure and promotion. Um, I will say though that the university and the health system were just all about getting everybody back as soon as possible. So after a short period of time of being shut down, the, uh, Dr. Rao and the research teams in the health system got together, started the return to research plan, and pretty much is, is back, you know, pretty much back uh, strong as we are, uh, where we are today, with, uh, as we speak today. So for this presentation, I'm going over the sort of the um, activities that we've had over this past year. First, I will introduce our Office of Research uh, Scholarship Innovation Team. I'll refer to them as ORSI from here on. Then I'll provide an overview of our grant activity, some of our faculty, uh, some highlights of our faculty research, and some of their scholarship too. I'd like you to keep in mind, as you see, actually so, some of the uh, productivity that we have had this past year, but just to remind you that we only have about 15 or 18 research faculty in the School of Nursing. So with that, here is our Office of Research Scholarship and Innovation. As you can see, we have uh, three major areas under, um, under the, the Dean, our Research Administration, our Data Services, and our Biobehavioral Research Lab. Our Research Administration is such an amazing and strong team Christina Kairos is our pre-awards person. Uh, Vishali Neifade is our post-awards person. Erica Gregory, uh, as a research administrator, oversees our research assistants and uh, deals with regulation and compliance. And Scott Delano just start with, started with us in uh, January as an executive administrative assistant, and we share him with, uh, with the Langston Center. Under data services, Dr. Ellswick, who's been with us for many years, oversees um, this, uh, data services for our faculty, uh, helps to connect them with maybe statisticians if they need them for their projects. Sally Russell has been with Dr. Ellswick for a number of years as the data manager. They're a strong team. And then our biobehavioral research lab, our director is Dr. Teresa Swift-Scanlon. Uh, she started with us three or four years ago and her lab technician is Jacob Graham. So it's a strong office. We've been um, at work together well, and that's also, it is just kudos to this office because that's helped with the success over these past few years. 
So this past year was a big year for us. Uh, we started with um, Teresa Swift Scanlon had put in a HETEF request for a mass array system, which she uh, received the funding for. That's been added to a biobehavioral research lab. As you can see, it does a number of of uh, analyses related to the genotyping and methylation, et cetera. It, um, she's garnered a number of, of contracts uh, within the School of Nursing, within the university, and outside the university. And then uh, next, when we look at our grant activity for the year, we had 51 submissions with a total of 28 awards. Um, for our external grants, we had a total of 2.5 million that were awarded. And for our internal grants, that it was a little over $237,000. Um, our internal grants, both B internal to either BCU or to the School of Nursing, this is where our donors are very um, uh, helpful in help helping our assistant and associate professors um, get their research off the ground. This provides a lot of pilot funding that they use to then move, uh, gather and, and which puts them in good positions for those uh, larger federally funded or externally funded awards. I also wanted to um, highlight that we have um, our doctoral students who are also submitting grants and we had three awarded uh, that were outside or external to VCU for a total of over 11,000. And then one within VCU that was a little over 3,000. Again, we have a small doctoral program. Um, a large number of them are still in coursework. So if there's a small number who are actually in the dissertation phase when they're applying for these. Next, I'd like to give you a little bit of uh, um, Exam some examples of the types of research our faculty are doing. Just to give you a, a, an example of the breadth of research they're doing. Um, and again, these are just, just examples. This is not everyone. Um, so starting with the second half of the year, someone was asking about the COVID research going on. We have actually three faculty in the School of Nursing who are conducting research related to aspects of COVID-19. Uh, Pam Parsons is doing a study on older adults uh, living with the COVID-19 pandemic. Patricia Kinzer uh, is doing a study in which is, this is actually related to um, or connected to a national study on COVID-19 and perinatal experiences. And Latha Kamon Raj is doing a study with uh, patients who receive hematopoietic stem cell transplants and some of their experiences with COVID-19. So, um, so our faculty jumped right in and uh, got these studies up and running uh, to contribute to the science around COVID-19. Backing up a little bit through the rest of the year, despite COVID-19, we did have, a, again, an active grant year. Um, huge kudos to Patricia Kinzer and Nancy Jallo and Patricia's team who received an R01 this spring. Uh, which is on a randomized controlled trial of an internet-based internet program for preventing and reducing perinatal depressive symptoms. This is a huge one. We're so excited for Patricia. As you'll notice, this was funded at, at, through NIH um, through Child Health and Human Development. Again, the breadth of our funders has, has uh, or, um, or the, the different funding agencies from NIH uh, have increased this year. We also have um, some internal grants. Nancy Jallo and Lisa Brown are co-PIs on this grant and Patricia Kinzer are co i and their team funded through the Wright uh, Center for Clinical and Translational Research. It's a pilot image through the Pilot Imaging Fund. This is the effect, they're examining the effects of cannabis on brain connectivity associated with maternal attachment. We also have uh, Dr. Elswick who is biostatistician, is a professor in the School of Nursing, um, very active on a number of grants. This is just one example. He is on a VTAR grant with Dr. Barron from the School of Medicine on the safety and efficacy of state-of-the-art exoskeleton technology to improve mobility in Parkinson's disease. 
Jane Chung uh, and her team were also awarded a CCTR grant for out-of-home mobility assessment in dementia patient and caregiver dyads. Jane is one of our assistant professors. Uh, we'll have some good new, more good news about Jane in a, a little later. I also wanted to highlight some of the studies that are ongoing that were perhaps not funded this year, but were funded in previous years, but are still going on. We have Teresa Swift Scanlon and uh, Dr. Ellswick and their team that are in the midst of an R01 on genetic and epigenetic regulation of COMT, a key moderator of cognitive de decline. We also have Ingrid Presser aboff uh, and Dr. Ellswick and team. Uh, Ingrid received a Michael J. Fox Foundation grant for optimizing uh, on, with, for patients with Parkinson's disease on optimizing vibration therapy to improve their gait and balance. More on Ingrid to come too. Also, Terry Jones and her team ha um, were funded by VCU Ventures Program and Cogit Analytics, uh, their studies on unique nurse identifier validation study. We do have some recently funded research that I wanted to highlight in this past year. Anna Diallo and her team were funded, um, uh, funded through State University of New York that in collaboration with National Heart and Lung Blood Institute, a formative evaluation of a mobile market to increase access and consumption of vegetables among low-income older adults during the COVID-19 pandemic. Jane Chung um, was awarded an RO3 uh, just recently, she heard, through National Institute of Aging, Voice to Connect, informing the design of smart speakers for social connectedness in low-income older adults. And also, Ingrid again, an R01, she just found out, hot off the press, and uh, our Ingrid, RK Ellswick, and team were funded through NI National Institute of Neurologic Disease and Stroke, context-aware freezing of gait and mitigation in real-world setting. As you can see, we now have several R01s, some R other R grants, um, other uh, foundation grants, we're, um, we're so excited. Uh, so here's our kudos and our celebration for this team, these three who recently heard on fun research that they had applied with during this past year. Um, for publications and pres presentations overall, we've had 89 unique publications, 87 peer reviewed and invited presentations. Uh, again, I'm just going to give you a highlight of a few of them. Um, for presentations, Lana Sargent, one of our assistant professors, was selected as the Audrey Nelson Research Lecturer for the 2020 Academy of Spinal Cord Injury Professionals Conference. This is based on her research on the association of physical function and cognitive impairment. And these next few slides are um, some uh, uh, publications that our faculty have and Again, it's to give you sort of a breadth of the types of research that they're doing. And what you'll notice in some of these publications is there are, um, is that there are a number of uh, either School of Nursing or VCU authors or co-authors. Uh, also some of our, our uh, faculty who are, have maybe moved to different universities, or um, you can see we're still collaborating together. So the first one is one by Lana Sargent, who you just saw, and one of the co-authors is Teresa Swift-Scanlon, uh, looking at shared mechanisms for cognitive impairment and physical frailty. Another example is Ana Diallo, our other assistant professor who was just funded um, through SUNY on metabolic profiling of blood and urine for exploring the functional role of microbiota. We have uh, for um, fibromyalgia, Teresa Swift Scanlon is a co-author on here, but some of our faculty who have left um, that are still collaborating, Victoria Menzies, Angela Stark, Rather, Deborah Lyon. Um, we also have one of our previous doctoral students on here, Deborah Lynch Kelly. And then uh, for this one on older women's perceptions, this is Jane Chung, again, who you saw just had the CCTR awards to her and the RO3. And uh, here, Terry Jones. Terry Jones really is our, um, is our, our um, healthcare quality expert in nursing. And uh, this is one of her um, 
papers. Uh, and as you see, Marion Barinholt, who was, uh, has moved on to University of North Carolina as one of her co-authors. And then Patricia Kinzer, again, who just had the R01, one of her papers. Here we have uh, a trio of our faculty here now, Joe Robbins, Nancy Jello, and Patricia Kinzer, Treatment Fidelity and Mind-Body Interventions. Uh, this was published in uh, Journal of Holistic Nursing and uh, won an award. And then um, one of my recent articles is on the exercise testing of adolescents and young adults with sickle cell disease. So we had a very busy year. Our Office of Research was very tired by the end of year, the year, but we are um, excited now that we have Amy as our new Associate Dean of Research, and I am going to turn it over to Amy. Thank you, Suzanne. Everybody see that? Just trying to get it the right place. Okay. So I'm very excited to be here. I am so humbled by the legacy that I see in this school and, and just so impressed with all of the work going on. And uh, feel very uh, fortunate that so much work went into the rebuilding of this, of the research structure within the School of Nursing. And I think it's been an amazing process. Uh, I can totally appreciate uh, the, the blood, sweat and tears that went into doing that. And I'm very happy to be coming in at a time when all of that's behind me. <laughs> um, but we still have a lot of work to do. So I wanna talk about, uh, sort of what I'm doing as I step into this role, what my research and experience has been, and how I hope we can uh, move things even uh, further for our school. So uh, my first item on my agenda was to do an assessment to see uh, what is going on here and what are the uh, potential, what is the potential for the future and what will be the strategy. So this is still in progress. It's only been a couple of months, so I'm still learning. And I'm very grateful to have Suzanne by my side and such a wonderful ORC team to help me learn all of, all of the things I need to be successful. Uh, but the thing that I've, I've seen and what I think you might be able to have uh, gleaned from Suzanne's presentation is that we have some really wonderful, solid research themes going on in the School of Nursing, uh, one of them being perinatal mental health which is very exciting to me because that's one of my areas of research uh, and geriatric health, uh, particularly in the community with um, the elderly living in um, low income areas, uh, those needing um, assistance with mobility and nutrition, particularly during these, these tough times and sensors to support health and living, which is the way of the future. And I think it's going to change how we deliver healthcare an assessment and is so important uh, for the work that we're doing. I've also noticed through all of the work that's been going on that I think faculty are ready for next level connections. Our uh, junior, mid-level and senior faculty uh, are really working well together and working within and outside of the School of Nursing. And uh, I think there's a strong uh, desire even from other schools to work with our faculty. Uh, so it's very exciting. I also think there's um, readiness for the scope of research here for an expansion. And I think natural extensions of the work that's going on already are, are starting to happen as we speak. And I've also been really impressed with the number of rich resources that are available to support the research here, both within the School of Nursing, from the funding from donors to uh, research support at the uh, Office of Office, the VP's Office of Research area uh, is just uh, very nice to know we have those resources. So the goals, as I can see them at least in this very premature time, 
is to increase collaborative networks, both within the School of Nursing and across VCU schools and programs. And I have been talking with a lot of folks from other schools, the School of Medicine, Pharmacy, Allied Health, um, about how we can make that happen. And then national and international collaborations that are already starting to form. To broaden the research scope, uh, for example, the perinatal mental health that's going on here. Uh, one of my goals in my own research is to bring fetal, infant, child, and longitudinal follow-up work to perinatal mental health, shifting the focus from simply maternal-focused to family-focused, which kind of leads into this lifespan approach. Because if you think about the geriatric and elderly research that's going on here, when we add uh, young families and children, fetuses, we've got a whole lifespan approach which to me is very exciting. And to address current and future needs, we have been thrown uh, all sorts of uh, shifts and curveballs this year with COVID-19. I think we have learned a lot from it and I try to remain positive with everything that we have learned and gained from it. Uh, one of them is that we're gonna have to learn what the impact of this has been on health of our, of our nation. And it's also taught us about how we can use telehealth and community networks to serve the needs of our, of our uh, patients and our communities better. And we've also, uh, it's been highlighted about the health disparities that's happened. And so how can we make our research uh, address these health disparities and also to be equitable across all of the populations that we serve? Of course, there are challenges in, in meeting these goals such as the uncertain future of COVID-19 going forward, silos and borders that we have to uh, overcome, access to information and resources that are out there may not always get to uh, the right people. And so that's something that we have to address and faculty turnover and sustainability, which I think is a, uh, just a natural part of academics and uh, you know, just having a plan for how we're going to deal with that and how we're going to uh, move things along. So some of the solutions and thinking about this is sort of where I'm at. Uh, but before I get to sort of the solutions and strategies, I think one of the first things is, is to reflect on and use my own experiences and bring those with me to what I'm doing here. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about my, my background and, and research. So I started out from nursing school in adult neurology. I've always been fascinated by the brain and amazed by what our brains do and how little we understand about it. So I uh, went into a neurology unit and discovered that what I was really interested in was the behavior that I saw in some of the conditions that I was treating. And uh, so I ended up at child psychiatry and worked in a hospital with children with developmental disabilities and autism and eventually emergency services, and became uh, kind of burned out from psychiatry very quickly because I was so overwhelmed by uh, such extreme problems these families faced and really wanted to uh, figure out how to prevent these issues in the future. One of the things that um, working in this setting allowed me to do was also to gain in, uh, experience in pediatrics. Interestingly, for uh, nursing educators, when I was in nursing school, the two uh, rotations that I liked least was psychiatry and pediatrics. And now I've built my career on both of those. Uh, so you just never know <laughs> um, where, where your experience will take you. But um, I did go back and get my doctorate at that point after having my uh, clinical nurse specialist of education and practice because I did want to prevent these issues. And I found out that maybe if you worked with women while they were pregnant or while their children were young, that maybe we could impact their child's later mental health. And so I went back to get my doctorate specifically so I could learn about infancy and development. So I went to a, a developmental psychobiology program in Connecticut and worked with Evelyn Tillman, where I learned that sleep was actually our way to be a window into the brain and what was going on in development. And from there, I went to Brown on a T32 fellowship and learned about infant mental health and behavioral sleep medicine and incorporated that into my practice as well. And um, also learned that we could go back a little further. 
we could go into fetal monitoring to look at what's happening with the fetus prior to birth and develop through this K23 training award through NIH, a way of monitoring the fetus with an ultrasound machine and heart rate combined together to look at prenatal risk factors and outcomes on the fetus. I learned about obstetrics um, and advanced fetal monitoring through that program. And I also had a component that taught me a lot about perinatal mental health um, and how important it is to take care of the entire family. And what all of this experience has taught me is that nursing does drive and connect academic and health system disciplines and interests, and that it's important to take advantage of the experience around us. Um, I have touched on all of these, child psych, pediatrics, neurology, OB, uh, sleep, and infant and perinatal psychiatry. And it's really taught me the value of collaborations and cross-discipline research. So I've also taken um, my experience, taking my experience with me in terms of national collaborations and projects um, that have been so valuable. Uh, the mother's study, for instance, was a double-blind placebo uh, RCT to look a uh, randomized control trial, which was this, the main study that helped to put buprenorphine as a medication uh, on the map through the FDA for women with opioid use disorder to have another treatment option besides methadone while they were pregnant. The NIH is also conducting an ECHO birth cohort study that I'm involved with, particularly for substance exposure. Um, that's sort of my particular interest area. And I've been studying for a long time the effect of SSRIs or an antidepressant um, and other medications and treatments and conditions in the mother and how that impacts development. The HEAL initiative is a more recent NIH pro program um, and I, that is looking at these same kinds of outcomes, but particularly for prenatal and early infant outcomes. And I've been a consultant and co-chair on the perinatal and birth measures um, uh, part of that study. And uh, also very exciting for me because I was involved very recently on a standards committee and had never done work like that before. And it was a group of people who worked with um, intensive care units for infants uh, across the country and internationally coming together to look at the standards and competencies and best practices for infants and family-centered developmental care in the ICU. And that was just published recently in the Journal of Perinatology. My current work uh, is ongoing and I'm bringing some of this here to, to, with me to VCU and I've just started to explore how I can uh, work with both nurses and other and faculty within the, the School of Nursing, the VCU health system, and other schools. Uh, the current projects include uh, looking at the effects of prenatal smoking compared to e-cigarettes, and in another project, marijuana, with my longtime colleague, Laura Stroud. Uh, my role in this is to take my fetal and newborn neurobehavior protocols and apply them to this so that we can look at these outcomes and we've um, added to this uh, a protocol for looking at brain uh, structure in, by using ultrasound. And this picture here is one of our frontal lobes in the fetus. So we're able to actually get volumes in the brain. Um, on the other side of things, working with my, another longtime collaborator, Cynthia Battle at, uh, at Brown, looking at alternative interventions for depression and pregnancy, such as walking and yoga. And new research uh, developing on sleep EEG in pregnant and postpartum women uh, with um, an equipment uh, grant from the Dream Company, which has developed a new EEG headband, which is very comfortable and can be used in a mobile settings. Very important in our research today. And newborn and maternal sleep in families with opioid use disorder is an active discussion at VCU with folks within the department and in other schools. And we also have potential research on the horizon with uh, a grant that's currently under review for uh, my long-term follow-up of adolescent children who were, had prenatal antidepressant exposure. And uh, Suzanne had mentioned the COPE study for um, Patricia Kinzer, who really just took this um, national initiative and, and ran with it, has done a great job of getting a, a wonderful cohort together to look at pregnant women and, and uh, in the postpartum and their experiences with COVID and healthcare 
And our plan is to continue to follow them and to see, to uh, look at how this has impacted the children in their development. So with that, what are our strategies? So these are just forming, but I think structured mentoring, uh, and there's already such incredible mentoring going on here, but there's uh, committees that are forming and um, work groups to really look at how we can structure this for students and faculty at all levels. Uh, to um, promote collaborative grant projects, and this is uh, ongoing talks that are going on to form these types of projects like training grants and program projects. And to assess and improve our operational and organizational efficiency, both within the ORSI office and for resource, resource utilization within the School of Nursing and at VCU. And of course, faculty recruitment, which is always important in an academic setting. So thank you. We'll be open for questions. Well, thank you very much, both uh, Suzanne and Amy, for uh, providing some uh, background about what has been going on within the office, and Amy for sharing um, a little bit about what you think the vision is, and also for sharing about your experience. I know folks were going to be interested in that. So from here, what I'd like to do, there were a couple of questions that were submitted ahead of time, so I'd like to ask those, but in the meantime, feel free. Um, if you've got some questions, you're more than welcome to submit them through the chat, whether that's to everybody or privately to me, or at the end of these couple of questions, you'll have a chance to also unmute yourself and ask the questions to the group. So the first question that I have, and um, either Suzanne or Amy, uh, whoever would like to take this has to do with COVID-19. So Suzanne, you touched on this a little bit uh, during your presentation, but the question is just simply, could you please provide an update on recent COVID research at VCU? Um, so I, I think we did try to, I actually, we had seen the question ahead of time, tried to give a little bit about that. So I uh, presented the research from our School of Nursing faculty um, for the university uh, overall, the, um, the university had a, um, it was a really pretty exciting um, call to fund research, um, small projects, uh, small funding, but it, uh, well, actually I say small, but it really wasn't that small. They, but they funded over, I believe it was over 20 studies that focused on um, COVID-19, different aspects of COVID-19 research. That's a, uh, in addition to a lot of the major, several of the major clinical drug trials that are going on um, that, um, you know, BCEO has been on the forefront with. So there is, there's a lot of research and more um, with NIH offering um, a, a large amount of grant money for COVID-19, many more grants going in for COVID-19 research. So I would say that VC is very active uh, and busy with COVID-19 research. All right, thanks Suzanne. And my second question here that was submitted ahead of time, uh, this is one question with a few questions kind of inter interspersed. So uh, this question says, I'd love to know how VC nursing research is doing after uh, leadership transitions and specifically from the department departures of folks such as Drs. Grapp, Monroe, Pickler, and McCain to now. And what are some of those stories how are we doing now and what does the future hold? And I feel like uh, between the two of you, you were able to address, um, you know, kind of some of the issues in terms of how we're doing now and what does the future hold, but would appreciate anybody adding some insight uh, to kind of what's happened maybe in between. So um, again, with the uh, rebuilding that I had mentioned, uh, there were some years that we were struggling after our, our, a number of us who are here today, our mentors left. Uh, we, did, uh, we did go through a rough period of transition. 
Uh, but as you could see from the productivity in these past couple of years, and, and even just in this past year with one, two, two RO1s and an RO3, um, other external grants and internal grants that we're back on track. And we've got senior researchers, we've got a strong biobehavioral research lab. Teresa has made tremendous strides with uh, um, uh, collaborations and uh, collaborators using our biobehavioral research lab that our um, our predecessors, uh, those, those exact, the, 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 Dr. Monroe, Grab, Pickler, and, and McCain all got the initial funding for. Um, it's it's been their work, their their work to get that up and running is um, recognized, acknowledged, and it was like we need to continue this because it was such a strong start. So I think we've made. Um, just tremendous strides uh, across all aspects of research but it was hard work and there were some rough years um, but we've had support from our, our dean uh, we had a good ADR come in and help structure things and we had faculty who were committed to making to to bringing back um, the research at the school of nursing All right, Suzanne, thank you very much for those insights. Um, from here, I'd like to see if anybody um, has any questions that they might have for the group. Um, I didn't see any questions come in through the chat. Amber or Sydney, did either of you see any questions come in to you? Okay, no. All right, so yeah, happy. If anybody would like to unmute themselves, feel free. Hi, Dean Langston. I see you. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm still having trouble with my Zoom skills. I don't nope, haven't you, been Zooming as much as you all have. No, nope, you're doing great. I, I actually, the a couple of my messages, one was intended to go to Jean, and I see it went to everybody. So I apologize for that clutter. Um, but I'm really impressed. I, I missed the first three minutes of Suzanne's presentation, but I think I know a little bit about the history. Um, I'm really impressed at where you are now. I'm, I'm deeply impressed at how you all um, remained very focused on recovering a, a strong research base that uh, went away with um, the aging out of the faculty. Um, and it, it just gives me great pleasure to hear. Um, Amy, I look forward to, to meeting you personally um, and welcome you to our School of Nursing. Um, and I, I thank you uh, for the visions that you all are creating to continue what I think is just so important, not only for the School of Nursing, but for nursing and the health of the nation. Sounds like your work is just phenomenal. Thank you. No questions, just <laughs> platitudes. We'll take them. <laughs> no, always appreciate it. How about anybody else? Does anybody else have anything that they'd like to add or ask about this afternoon? seeing folks. Oh, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. It's good to see you. Good to be here. Mine is also a comment. Um, I sure hope we'll do this again in a few months and see what, what has transpired in that period of time, maybe sometime in the first half of next year. I would, I would love to hear updates. That sounds good. And Peggy, we appreciate uh, your feedback and your input very much. Do, do, may I ask, do you feel like we hit on the types of updates you would like to hear? Oh yeah. Um, it's been a few years since I was at MCV, BCU. Um, I live on the West Coast now. 
and this this is a wonderful way to stay in touch yes everything interests me that that's being done um and i i i bet bcu is ahead of the curve on the covid research in the school of nursing i i just bet we are so yeah very thank interesting you. thank you very much well if i could make a comment um you know these these situations like COVID and pandemics and uh, all the altered work environment that we're all faced with, uh, actually altered lifestyle that we're all faced with, um, there are times that there are silver linings that come out of these. So one of the silver linings, quite honestly, has been we have been forced to be uh, to to explore different ways of communicating and staying in touch. And although um, I'm really tired of Zoom meetings in general, because that's the only way we seem to meet for everything, what we have learned and that we have an entire society that now has a different level of acceptance and skill in attending um, web-based meetings. So I think that the ability for us to hold sessions like this for updating um, our, our stakeholders We'll, we'll probably always do this now because we've always relied on, you know, print magazines and, um, you know, coming to reunions. And quite honestly, we were probably missing out on uh, great opportunities to keep people informed of the work that goes on here. So, um, you know, we will we will come back to, I think, a little bit more normal future. Um, you know, many of us are back to work um, in the school and not everybody, but a lot of us are, are coming in. Students are back. Uh, but the actual cadence of our our function on how we how we interact with each other has um, continues to be really quite different. Um, but Pam Pam Lowe and your team just coming up with these ideas for these kind of sessions is just really refreshing, and I, I just love the response that we've had. Yeah, just on that front, um, you know, we were. We've hosted, I'm not sure at this point, maybe seven or eight of these different types of events since we um, got ourselves organized to put these on. And through the course of these, have been able to provide some updates and such to now over 300 of our alumni, friends, and donors. So it's it's been a real pleasure to be able to reach out to you all in this way. I think from our office's perspective, we've got quite a bit on our plate <laughs> coming up between now and the end of the calendar year. So I think we're going to taper off on these events. I think we're hopeful maybe to try to host maybe one more of these events between now and the end of the calendar year and then pick them back up in January. Um, and so we always, Sydney's always great. She sends out a post-event survey. And with that, we'd like your feedback for this particular event, but also if you have any ideas um, to bring to the table for what we could keep presenting, we're always open. Are there any other questions or comments that anybody would like to add or share? See here, it looks like Looks like most folks are staying muted. I'm just trying to kind of hover over and see here. Well, if no one has, has any additional comments or questions, um, we'll close things up for this afternoon. Um, and again, it was, I'm glad all of you could join us today. And uh, my team, Amber, if you don't mind waving to everybody, Amber Yancey on my team, our alumni and stewardship specialist, and Sydney, you can give everybody a wave. She's our development specialist and um, uh, puts these events on and keeps us all on track. So thanks everybody for joining us. You'll get an email from Sydney shortly. Again, it's a post event survey and also a call for feedback for future events. And if you think of anything um, to share with us just in general, please feel free. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Nancy.